Hey everyone. After flying the Mini 4 Pro for the past few weeks, I have compiled a list of things you may not know or may not be immediately obvious about this drone. And I have also been getting a lot of questions about this drone, such as are the filters and batteries from the Mini 3 Pro compatible with this new Mini 4 Pro? So let's jump right in and take a look. Now, if you're new around here, welcome to The Drone Creative, the channel that helps you learn more about flying drones. From the basics to the most advanced techniques to help you get better looking images and more cinematic videos with your drone. So if you would like to see more of that, then please consider subscribing by clicking that subscribe button down below. And when you're down there, make sure to check the notification bell so that you will be alerted when my new videos are released. It would be greatly appreciated. All right, let's start with something you might not know and somewhat of a hidden feature on the new DJI Mini 4 Pro. And that is how to use the new hyperlapse feature that allows you to extend the time limit while recording. With the new DJI Mini 4 Pro, there's actually an option which allows you to extend how long your hyperlapse will be even after you have started recording that hyperlapse. So while you are capturing a hyperlapse, if you want to extend the duration of the hyperlapse you're currently capturing, you want to press this small plus one second icon. It's not a very obvious icon, but it's located here. And when you press this, you will see that one second has now been added to the duration of your hyperlapse. And you can keep pressing this button or this icon to keep increasing the duration of your hyperlapses all the way up to 30 seconds while capturing them. Now, up until this point, filters have been compatible between the Mini 3 and Mini 3 Pro. And when I got this Mini 4 Pro and quickly looked at the camera, I thought that any filters that fitted the Mini 3 Pro or Mini 3 were definitely going to be able to fit on the front of the Mini 4 Pro. But unfortunately, that is not the case. When you remove the cap to see the camera lens of the Mini 4 Pro, you can see that this camera lens is slightly bigger than that of the Mini 3 and Mini 3 Pro. And there is this little notch just to the side of the camera lens. And this is now slightly different than the Mini 3 and Mini 3 Pro. All this means that any filters you currently have for the Mini 3 and Mini 4 Pro, unfortunately, are not going to fit onto this Mini 4 Pro. Sticking with compatibility, another question I am getting asked a lot is, are the batteries that worked on the Mini 3 and Mini 3 Pro compatible with the Mini 4 Pro? Well, the answer is yes, they are. They fit into the back of the drone perfectly and you can fly the Mini 4 Pro with Mini 3 Pro batteries inserted. However, there are some differences between these batteries. Firstly, the weight. The Mini 3 Pro batteries are slightly heavier at 80 grams over the Mini 4 Pro's batteries at 77 grams. This means that if you want to use the Mini 3 Pro batteries in the Mini 4 Pro, it actually pushes the total drone weight over 249 grams to roughly 253 grams, which I know is only a small difference, but if you want to strictly stay below 250 grams and within the rules, you will want to use the batteries specifically designed for the Mini 4 Pro. Also, power-wise, the capacity of the Mini 3 Pro's batteries are slightly less at 2,453 milliamp hours compared to the new Mini 4 Pro batteries, which have 2,590 milliamp hours. DJI does advise that flight time and performance will be impacted using the older 3 Series batteries with the new Mini 4 Pro. Another question I'm seeing getting asked quite a lot is does the controllers, the DJI RC2 and the DJI RC N2 that comes with the DJI Air 3 work with the DJI Mini 4 Pro? And the answer is yes. All you need to do is pair your controller to the new DJI Mini 4 Pro. Now to do that on the controller home screen, you want to go to the connection guide button on the bottom right of the screen. And in here you will see the two drones that you can fly with these controllers, the DJI Air 3 and the new DJI Mini 4 Pro. So if you want to start flying the Mini 4 Pro with these controllers, you simply want to press the Mini 4 Pro icon and the controller will start searching for that aircraft and connect to it. Now, if this is your first time doing this process, it might not automatically connect to your Mini 4 Pro. So if it hasn't automatically connected after a few seconds, you will want to press the unable to connect to aircraft button on the bottom of the controller screen and then press the pair button and your controller will start making a beeping noise. Then you want to press and hold the power button on your Mini 4 Pro for a few seconds until it starts making a beeping noise. And after a few seconds, your controller will pair to your DJI Mini 4 Pro and you can start flying the drone with the controller. Now, one final question I have got asked quite a lot is does the Mini 4 Pro have the same overheating issues as the Mini 3 Pro? 
So if you had a Mini 3 Pro and you were doing things like firmware updates, what you might have noticed happening, especially if it was a hot day or your drone was indoors, is that you would get a overheating warning and the drone might turn off. Well, I have noticed that the Mini 4 Pro has a new eco mode. So when you're doing a firmware update, after a few seconds, you will see a prompt appear on the screen saying that the drone has now went into eco mode and camera view will be disabled. So you won't actually be able to go in and view what the drone's camera is viewing. And by this new eco mode turning off some of the drone's features when doing things like firmware updates, this should keep the drone cooler for longer so that you don't get the same overheating issues as you had with the Mini 3 Pro. Now a new feature on this drone that I only recently stumbled across and isn't immediately obvious so you might not know, is that you can actually connect this drone to a computer and download the files off the internal storage or microSD card without turning it on. So with the DJI Mini 3 Pro, if you wanted to download the files off the internal storage or microSD card to your computer, you would need to turn the drone on and this would mean you had to take off the gimbal guard because you wanted the gimbal to be free when the drone turned on and then with the drone on, you connected it to the computer. But with this new DJI Mini 4 Pro, you can actually just connect the drone straight to your computer and access the files without having to turn it on. Now, just while we are talking about the internal storage, the DJI Mini 4 Pro actually gets a small boost in internal storage, as it now has two gigabytes, which is up from the Mini 3 Pro's 1.25 gigabytes of internal storage. Now, two gigabytes is not a lot, but it will allow for approximately 60 JPEG images or around three minutes of 4K footage. So enough to get a few clips and potentially salvage your day if you forget to bring a micro SD card. Now, something else you might not know is that DJI provide a lot for the D-Log M color profile to convert that to normal looking Rec. 709 footage. Now, if you don't know what D-Log M is, it's one of the new color profiles you can use on the DJI Mini 4 Pro. 10-bit D-Log M captures more than 1 billion colors and better retains highlight and shadow details. And because this color mode helps retain more image details, it can give you a massively improved image quality. Because D-Log M also retains more highlight and shadow details, this gives you much more flexibility when color grading in post. But something to be aware of is the footage you capture in D-Log M will be very desaturated and very flat coming straight from the drone. To get the benefits of D-Log M, you need to color grade these video clips. So a really handy tip to know if you are a beginner to color grading, or if you just want to color grade the D-Log M video clips from this drone very quickly, is that DJI themselves provide a D-Log M to Rec. 709 LUT. Rec. 709 is a color space that produces images that are very normal and realistic with a good amount of contrast and saturation. So all you have to do is download this LUT, then in your favorite video editor, apply this LUT to your footage, and this will quickly add saturation and contrast back to your clips. And I will put a link down below to where you can download this LUT off DJI's website. Now a feature that I first seen on the DJI Air 3 that has also been added to the DJI Mini 4 Pro is folder customization. So to access this feature, you want to go to the settings menu on the top right of the controller screen, go across to the camera subheading and scroll down until you see a new option called custom folder naming. Now when you press this, you will be able to set the name of the folder that the video clips or images you're going to capture will go into. Then when you go to a different location, you can go back in and set a new name and then any further clips you capture will go into this new folder, meaning that when you get back home, all your clips are already nicely and neatly organized into individual folders for each location. Now, one of the big new features on the Mini 4 Pro is the new Active Track 360 system, which allows you to not only decide which orientation the drone will track you from, but you can also decide if the drone tracks you from a close or far distance, and you can also trace a path on the trace wheel of the Active Track 360 system to have the drone do maneuvers around you. But did you know that you can change things such as the height the drone will track you at and the distance of the close and far tracking as the drone tracks you? To do this, again, you want to go to the settings menu on the top right of the controller screen. This time you want to go across to the control subheading. And if you scroll down, you will see a new option called focus track settings. And then if you scroll down, you can see the first thing we can change is the distance the drone will track you at when you're using the close circle and the far circle. 
Now by default, when the drone is tracking you closely, it will stay five meters away from you. But you can see you can adjust this by dragging this left slider. So you could instead have the drone be 10 meters away from you when it's set to track you closely. You can also do this for when the drone is tracking you from a far distance. So you can see it's currently set to 10 meters, but you can have the drone track you from 15 meters when you have it set to track you on the far option of the focus track wheel. Scrolling down, you can change the inner height, which is the height the drone will fly at in the air when you have it set to track you closely. You can also change the outer height, which again is how high the drone will fly in the air when it's tracking you using the far setting. Beneath this, you have two bypass options. So as the drone is tracking you, it will automatically fly around any obstacles, but you have a normal and fast option. When you have this set to normal, the drone will make more subtle attitude changes and in general be much smoother as it bypasses obstacles. If you change this to fast mode, this allows the drone to make greater attitude changes and move around obstacles in a more dynamic way. So this will allow the drone to fly closer to obstacles and fly around them faster, but be aware that this will result in less smooth footage as the drone is tracking a subject. Lastly, we have an option called near ground flight. And when this is turned on, your drone can descend below an altitude of two meters when tracking a subject. But there is a warning saying the risk of colliding with near ground obstacles will increase. So if you are going to use this option, you do need to be cautious. Also included with the DJI Mini 4 Pro is style parameters. Again, this is something we have seen added to recent DJI drones. So it's nice to see this added to the Mini 4 Pro. And this allows you to tweak the sharpness and noise reduction of your image. Again, to access this, we want to go to our settings menu and under the camera subheading, if you scroll down, you will see an option called style. Now, if you tap this, you will see the sharpness and noise reduction options appear. So here you can increase or decrease the sharpness of your image, and you can also increase or decrease the noise reduction on your image. Now waypoints is a new feature that has been added to the DJI Mini 4 Pro that allows you to create customizable routes and have the drone fly this route automatically. But something to be aware of is that your obstacle avoidance settings do not apply when using waypoints mode. So if you go to the safety menu on your drone, you will see you can decide between bypass, brake or off when it comes to obstacle avoidance. But in my testing, these do not apply when using waypoints mode. Regardless if you have this set to break or bypass, your drone will just break whenever it sees an obstacle and the waypoint mission will end. If you have this set to bypass, the drone won't bypass any obstacles on its waypoint mission. Instead, it will just break and stop the waypoint mission. Now the DJI Mini 4 Pro comes with a new auxiliary light on the bottom of the drone. And by default, this light comes on automatically when you take off or land the drone in low light or nighttime scenarios. And this helps the drone see the ground more clearly and to be more stable when hovering close to the ground in them low light or nighttime situations. But you can actually manually control this light in two ways. Firstly, if you go to the settings menu, under the safety tab, if you scroll down, you will see an option called auxiliary LED. Now in here, you have three options. Firstly, auto. And this allows the auxiliary light to function how we just described. So when you take the drone off or land it in low light or nighttime situations, the light will automatically come on. But you can also just manually set this to always be on by selecting the on option. Or if you don't want the light to come on as the drone is taking off or landing, you can simply turn it off by selecting the off option. The second way you can control this auxiliary light on the bottom of the drone is by mapping it to one of the function buttons on your controller, and then you can turn the light on or off simply by pressing this function button. Now to do this, again, go to the settings menu, but this time go across to the control subheading and then scroll down until you see the button customization option and click into it. Then you want to select the function button that you want to map to the auxiliary light. So in this case, I'm going to select the C2 button and under the control heading, you will see the auxiliary light option. Now by choosing this and setting it to that C2 function button, if I press that function button on the back of the controller, the light will turn on. And if I press it again, the light will turn off. Now I've had a few questions saying, is this possible to do if you have the DJI RC N2 controller? That's the controller you attach your phone to. And the answer is yes. On the DJI RC N2, instead of having function buttons on the back of the controller, you have one function button on the front of the controller. But just like the DJI RC N2, if you go into the settings menu, you will be able to customize what that function button does. And one of the options is to turn on or off the auxiliary light. 
Now, if you want to see everything new on the DJI Mini 4 Pro compared to the DJI Mini 3 Pro, I will put a link down below to my comparison video. And if you have any questions about this drone, please drop a comment down below and I will try my best to answer them in an upcoming video. Now, before you go, if you like this video and you learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things drones and want to know how to get more cinematic videos and better images with your drone, then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your drone game. And if you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos, then I recommend clicking that subscribe button down below and making sure the notification bell is checked so that you will be alerted when my new videos are released. If you want to stick around and watch a few more of my tutorials now, here's a few I personally recommend. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.